Who's here representing at the house here tonight at the observatory with the homie Sick Jacket? What's going on, man? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. And uh, of course, we're gonna kick things off. Every artist I interview, I run their name through the Wu Tang Name Generator. So one thing I wanted to ask you is, what made you decide to choose the stage name uh, Sick Jacket? It was um, I was in high school, bro, and uh, and one of my one of my boys just kind of started saying it messing around, you know? Uh, was that Brian by chance? Yeah, it was Brian, Brian Pino. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. he was, uh, he started messing around with it and I ended up keeping it. And then it was jacking at first and then we started doing the whole, you know, the whole six side thing and everything. We just added the six jacket to it. And uh, this was, you said high school, back in your days, um, the Los Angeles Center for Rich Studies, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it was a magnet school. We were part of the affirmative action uh, you know, Latino percentage that went to the school. You know what I mean? Our neighbor, our neighbor uh, David Chavez, we were, we were born and raised in People Union. Our neighbor went to uh, went over there because he had good grades, and uh, and then we kind of followed suit. You know what I mean? I was in the honors program when I was in elementary, so it was easy for me to transfer over. But uh, they needed a certain percentage of Latinos, so the, the, the neighbors, uh, his, David's mom, told my parents and my mom filled out the application. You know, they were like, it's a good school. You get bust in. And, more opportunities for the kids, you know, instead of going uh, to Adams or, and, and uh, you know, Lorendo or, you know what I'm saying, like ending up, ending up in the public schools that are right there in the area, you got a chance of a, of a higher education, so we took it, and I went over there. I went to elementary school with Leonardo DiCaprio, bro, that was the shit. Yeah, I was actually about to ask to, uh, you know, kind of redeem myself, I wanted to ask, was there, besides the Leonardo DiCaprio, who was the other uh, famous classmate uh, at that time? Man, there was a lot of them. Uh, Paula Patton went to our school. There was a... Uh, Cut Chemist. Uh, Cut Chemist was there. Yeah, yeah Lucas McFadden was there. Um, he was actually in my brother's class, uh, in his grade, you know, Duke's grade. Um, who else? There was, uh, man, there was a bunch of kids, bro. There was uh, the twins that came out in, like, uh, there was this dude, Damon Hines, that came out in, um, in uh, Lethal Weapon. Abstract Rude went to our school. He used to write, Abstract Rude used to write little quotes on the chalkboard and draw this little figure with the dreads and shit. <laughs> I remember that. Abstract Rude is, you know, a hit, uh, hip hop artist probably from LA too, so. A lot of people went to that school, man. It was, it was dope. And uh, was that at the time uh, when you really became involved in music? Not just from the time when you first heard uh, Herbie uh, Hancock, you got some kids break dancing to that, but yeah. even before that, if I'm not mistaken, you played a trumpet in Miss Cox's music class. I played a, I played a trumpet in uh, Mr. Monarch's class. We used to play. Uh, I took music because it was an easy elective. And then uh, Mr. Monarch was like, a, he was a, he was a dope music teacher, man. He played every instrument in that classroom. And me and my boy John Joe, who was actually the guy that got me started at rapping, this guy I grew up with. Uh, we we took music class and then we convinced the teacher that we were too good to be in the regular class. So we told him, let us be in the practice room, you know, so we could uh, so we could just kind of practice the music on our own because you know the class is slowing us down. We right. tell him, so he let us chill in the practice room and we would kind of just talk to girls through the window and whatnot. And then come show time because we have to perform for the school. We would write the numbers of the valves under the notes. I mean, we know how to read music, but we didn't practice, so we just wrote the numbers of the valves that we could just get through it in the concert. And that's how we skimmed through it. But yeah, I used to play trumpet in, uh, in high school. Uh, it was high school or junior high, and then uh, I played piano when I got to college, too. That's cool. Uh, I'm glad you're you know, bringing up all these educational institutions you know, that obviously began your career. And um, with the first time you actually performed as, like, let's just say, uh, you know, as a career rapper, was with was that with, uh, what's it called, Yanju, when you visited uh, Duke's uh, Northridge, and there was somebody that didn't show up, they threw you guys on stage, right? There was actually, the group did show up. We were pulling up, it was a show at the uh, at the pub in CSUN. Duke used to go to CSUN. He stayed in Camp Snoopy, and it, it was like some dorm rooms they used to call Camp Snoopy, and his roommate was a DJ. Duke was a fool. He used to have a 79 Regal with hydraulics. He used to pull. He used to go up illegally into all the hills and pull it right in front of his dorm, back it up, and charge the batteries to his hydraulics out of his dorm room. But his uh, his neighbor DJ Pete uh, was hosting an event at the pub in Seaside, and, Sun, and um, Lighter Shaded Brown was performing. And when we pulled up, we pulled up. Um, 
they, there was these dudes getting on a tour bus and it was them. But we didn't know at the time. We just had kind of pulled up and we were running late. So we're like, hey, you guys know where the pub's at? They were like, yeah, it's right there. Wow, that's dope. I've, you even threw that in there. It's like, are you cheating? Looking over my notes, yeah. like, has, that has been mentioned that Dukes and his dorm day yeah. you know, charging up his like, dorm. No, yeah, no, that's the story, man. And, uh, and you know, and when we got there, his roommate was like kind of a little panicked out, stressed out. Like, man, these guys left early, you know, um, and for whatever reason. And uh, I got this just dead slot. You know, there's the other groups in here yet. So Duke was like, well, this is before Duke was even performing with us. You know what I mean? And he was like, man, my little brothers will perform, you know, and we're like, hell nah, we won't, you know, we ain't got no instrumentals, we ain't, we had never done a show before, and the thing is, Lume was like, man, I don't worry about that, I got instrumentals, so he was, we were rapping to like More Bounce and Genius of Love and all that, and um, the first, first thing that we spit was my boy Jonjo spit a Spanish verse, and that Spanish verse was the first verse that he had showed me when I, before I started writing rap, so. It was dope, and he got a good reaction, and then Lighter Street Brown and, and the organization, uh, Metra was called, they, they were throwing another event in, in that December. It was like a Christmas show or something, and they asked us to come back and open up for Lighter Street Brown again, so we did, and then that was the beginning of us doing shows for them, for that organization, and that's when we started doing East LA College and all these other events, then we started doing community events. That's when we did the Embodied Warfare at Placito Vera, and that's how we met Be Real. Yeah, he caught that uh, show, uh, obviously approached you guys, wanted to become the third member of Cycle Realm. He was actually, that day, he was there um, supporting one of his friends who was promoting a movie, and he saw us perform, and he asked uh, this guy named Menace from Land Alliance to introduce him to us. And we met him that day, and he was like, who are you guys fucking with? We were like, no, nobody. You know? Like, well, let me fuck with you guys. We're like, shit, be real at that time. 93, I had just graduated high school. He was, uh, 93 was uh, Black Sunday, you know what I mean? Yes, fucking, that's what they were talking about. Calling this the top of the world, you know what I mean? So, um, after that, you know, the, the movie that, that, that his friend was promoting was Mi Vida Loca, so that's why our first song that we ever put out was on the Mi Vida Loca soundtrack, you know? And that was the, our, the beginning of our professional career. Or, um, if I, May uh, take it a step further, or I guess back. Um, what about Merz? Wasn't he somewhat of a major influence when you guys first started touring, you know, um, at least within the US? Merz, no, no Merz, it, Merz didn't come, I didn't meet Merz um, till later on down the line. Uh, what we, the first major tour that we did was Smoking Grooves 97. Duke went on Smoking Grooves 96. This was for Cypress Hill though. Um, Duke went as as backup for B-Real, like but doing like as Duke's uh, B-Real's hype man in '96, smoking loose. And then we did, you know, we did a mid-set thing where we did a close that door, yeah, bro. We did a mid-set thing where we did a Psycho City Blocks and Confessions of a Drug Addict in the middle of the Cypress set on the whole run for Smoking Loose '97, which was dope because we got to introduce our music to 10 to 20 thousand people every night for two months across the U.S. You know? And that's and then after that the tour we did was with Insane Clown Posse. That's the tour that we did on our own at Psycho Realm. Uh, it was like a promo tour kind of. We're getting paid, but you know it was the first tour that we did on our own outside of Cypher. Yeah. And uh, was that around the time? Uh, what's it called? At eighty nine ninety when you guys went out. The okay. gas mask. We used to come out with the gas mask, and then eventually we started coming out with what we call the elephant mask, which is the gas mask with the with the bond attached to it. You know what I mean? Everybody had that straight shit that looked retarded. We used to we curved it, you know what I mean? And Bobo was the one that had somebody burn and just curve it and that shit looked mean, you know? So we used to come out and say, we're not on stage and just set it off. But before that, it was like we'd come out with gas masks, ski masks, whatever, you know? Yeah. That was dope. Um, I appreciate the history lesson. Now you got a chance to know Jack better. Now uh, let's move on to a lighter note. Obviously, uh, with the gas mask, the marijuana culture, your influence, you know, uh, your affiliation with Dr. Zodiac, the uh, mood, uh, what's it called, the Sick Rocks, uh, the Pilones, and uh, you're also going to debut the Six Sticks. Tonight. Yeah, that's Duke. Duke's doing that. My brother, my brother was doing uh, the Sick Rocks and the Mexican Morsels with Dr. Zodiac. Uh, they were they were the ones that, that were doing the Corrupt Moon Rock and all that. Um, my brother's starting his new venture called Sicko Sticks. It's the introduction to what he's gonna do. I mean, he has a long line of things that are coming out, but that's the intro, you know? Yeah. And he's gonna, and he's, he's gonna introduce it tonight. 
Um, he's gonna have product and stuff like that, uh, promotional things at the booth tonight. So going back to the whole, how you, why you chose your name, um, Sick Jack, and but going yeah. back to my initial question, uh, so I took your legal name, I ran that through the Wu Tang name generator. So had Sick Jack and been a member of the Wu Tang, uh, would you consider the Dynamic Conqueror as a potential stage name as a member of <laughs> the, the Dynamic Jack? Conqueror? <laughs> I think uh, I think I would have came out with a better name than that. Uh, would you care to debut that name, even if it's just in the works for now? Dynamic. What would you consider? What, for if Had I was a member of Wu-Tang? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea, bro. So for now, we'll just uh, go ahead and stick with Dynamic Conquer until you come up with something better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, DC. And making the other uh, Wu-Tang reference, as well as what you just mentioned earlier, speaking about you know making the gas masks and everything, if I'm not mistaken, you personally gave one, like an official uh, Psycho Realm gas mask to Method Man. Yeah, right? yep. Yeah, man, we, we uh, did a collaboration with Original Glass Products, my boy Casey over there, and uh, Method Man stopped by and we, we gave him a mask, man, he was flipping out. He was happy, bro, he just didn't smile on his face. <laughs> and um, also, obviously, you've definitely smoked with Be Real, and um, just to please the, you know, uh, stoner community, I want to ask who, in your opinion, was perhaps, like, you know, the coolest laid-back person you have smoked with? Uh, we got to we, when we were on the Insane Clown Posse tour. We got to uh, we got to smoke. Uh, we it was a show. Uh, I forgot where we were at, man. But it was snowing, and the green room was like this little shack outside of the venue. And we got to smoke with one of the dudes from the Grateful Dead. That was pretty cool. It's out of an apple. I think I put that in a song I just did with a Coca Nostra too. Uh, speaking of the Grateful Dead, I mean, growing up in the musical household you did, uh, it wouldn't be a surprise to maybe one day walk into your house randomly and perhaps there's some uh, Credence Clearwater playing? Yeah, no, it's my dad's favorite group. Yeah. Credence. <laughs> and it's crazy because my, you know, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter that my dad's a Mexican immigrant, you know, uh, from Mazatlan, Sinaloa, and he listened to everything from classic rock to Motown to videos to you know everything I mean just across the board I think that's why I have such a wide range of, of uh, taste in music you know what I mean the first time I heard of uh, you was with evidence on um, classical and yeah. I was like damn who is this cat you know check I uh, looked into your uh, history you know your work and I was like damn this feels sick and you know obviously you caught on to the wave I appreciate that man that's that's a good thing about doing collaborations with uh, with people like that is you know you, you get exposed to a different audience, you know what I'm saying? And some people actually will listen to you and hear you and, and look up your catalog and be like, man, I like how this dude sounds in the song. Let me check out another shit. You might have some good shit over here, you know? And it helped, you know what I mean? Doing songs with Ab, doing songs with Merz, doing songs with Ill Bill and Slain and them, you know? Uh, it, uh, Penny Pass, even, yeah, Penny, terminology. Exactly, with term, it, it helps, you know what I'm saying? It definitely helps expand uh, the awareness, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because again, People have an electric a taste in music. You find, you listen to an artist, there's a feature. Obviously, there's a connection there, so it, you yeah. reach out. And saying that, evidence is also, you know, amazing behind the board, production-wise. Oh, he's and the hope. Obviously, I say that because <laughs> I understand you're in the same boat. Um, you're, you know, you do like over 90% of, if not more, you know, the work you did. Obviously, uh, a lot Psychedelic of people, recently, that was entirely produced by yourself. Yeah, Psychedelic is the first record that I produced entirely since the Psycho Realm catalog. Um, the Psycho Realm records, I produced, you know, a good 90% of the records. Um, you know, with the exception of like Premonitions, Earthquake Weather, um, Dysfunctional, you know, a few songs under that Crow produced, uh, Crow from Street Platoon or TRT, you know. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I did most of that music and a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people assume that, you know, Muggs did it, which is cool, but I did it. That was a dope collab. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, it's cool. I just, but yeah, Psychedelic is, I think, you know, over the years I've been, I've been working on, on, on my, my production, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you figure like Six Symphonies album, I only produced a couple. Uh, Terror Tapes uh, 1, I don't think I did anything. Straight Bullets, I did a couple. Like, I haven't really been producing, but when I, you know, the song that I did do, it, you know, Terror Tapes 2 is when I came back and started doing, I did half of that record with Cynic from Street Platoon, and uh, it's, you know, we've always kind of incorporated instrumentation and arrangement and all that, but before, you know, it was just sampling, so I was doing SP-1200 shit, where I would just, you know, 
layer the song and, and do breakdowns and try to do as much as I can with 12 and a half seconds uh, uh, worth of sampling time and, and then you know at with two with uh, you know breaks of 2.5 uh, second pads you know what I mean so now you know incorporating mu musicians psychedelic I think is like you know where I want it to be the whole time you know what I mean psychedelic the the arrangement the instrumentation is I, I'm very happy with it you know what I mean and then on top of that too after my brother got shot you know my brother was like my front man so you know I had to make up for that you know what I mean and, I, and now I had to be not only the producer but I had to be the front man too so psychedelic I think is a culmination of that it's just me working over the years on on my vocal side and my production side you know I, mean? I think both are getting better which I'm, I'm very uh, very happy about it. and personally I can definitely second that notion I've been bumping that shit like at least four months straight after it came out I was obviously thank here you, for the release man so, thank you brother thank yeah. you and um, speaking of production and whatnot um, are you still um, you know in the process of doing that um, uh, album all Latino artists and maybe in Spanish yeah that that compilation is still gonna come what I wanted to do well, I'm not gonna give give up the idea because I don't want anybody to bite my shit because there's a lot of biters in this world now but yeah I'm still working on that what you're talking about yeah I'm still working on that definitely looking forward to that, that. Um, are you still carrying around your you know uh, mobile studio I guess with your backpack you know always produce always man and it's you know it's it's a lot easier now you know before for us a mobile a mobile little pre-production thing before was a, a, a little small suitcase with an MPC 1000 some small little monitors you know, a, a little portable turntable and a little mixer, you know, or a little small little four channel, two channel mixing board where you can kind of sample out of. That was before. Now you can have a full studio on your laptop, you know what I mean, which makes it easier. You know what I mean? In my, in my backpack, I carry my laptop, a, a little uh, 25 key uh, mini keyboard and a Kai, and, and uh, that's all I need, you know what I'm saying? I got all my, my samples pretty much with the songs I want to sample on my laptop. I just chop them up, you know, and I can just, I can make beats on an airplane if I want to, you know, like Dr. Dre in that commercial. That's it. Yeah, uh, technology has obviously played a major part in how people consume music today. Obviously, uh, record sales are not what it used to be. And uh, a conversation I had with uh, a lot of people, friends, personal, is uh, the way it seems is nobody's necessarily buying albums, but let's say they buy a single, and in order to promote your single, it's not as much to necessarily sell, this is all my opinion. But uh, it's more like relevant to tour. Uh, like touring is now the new selling of albums. Like once you sell an album or release an album, a single, it's time to go on tour. It's always touring. Touring has always been a good revenue stream. Music was once a good revenue stream. You know, now people don't buy music because everything is based on your phone. The internet's crazy. There's apps now where you can just download any song you want. You don't gotta buy music no more. So people nowadays. They don't put any value on music, which kind of sucks because, you know, we, we invest a lot of our time and our money to make these records, you know. So a lot of the times if like your favorite artist that you like disappears and stops making music and you wonder what happened to him. But what happened to him is you stopped buying his album so he couldn't feed his kids or feed himself so he had to go get a job, you know what I mean? And if you kind of, if you want your favorite artist to keep making music, you got to buy the record, you got to support the music. Even if you go and buy their t-shirt or come to a concert, and you're supporting the movement that helps them kind of feed themselves, pay the rent, pay the light bill, and be able to invest in their next album that you're going to rip for free, you know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, with merchandising, there's a lot of ways to make money. There's publishing, there's licensing, there's there's all kinds of things. Just a lot of artists ain't hit, they, they're not aware, you know what I mean? They, they, they don't get educated in these things. Right. You know? um, so, let's get to know, uh, well, let's just say Jack as a person. Um, I wanted to know firstly, uh, what are some of your personal hobbies and why not? Because obviously you keep your personal life very personal. Uh, you have kids, you obviously never, uh, you know, have any uh, postings on them and whatnot. You keep your private life private. So one of my personal questions to you is like, what does Jack do tomorrow after Cinco de Mayo when you wake up Saturday after doing tomorrow? I gotta it? tomorrow I gotta wake up and I gotta go do a meet and greet at uh, at my boy uh, Tattoo Nana's tattoo shop. He just opened up a tattoo shop in K Town called Cultural Image. So I'm doing a, a book signing. I, I put a book out with the psychedelic album. It's a lyric book. It has pictures in it, studio pictures and all that stuff. So um, I'm doing a signing for that. So I can, you know, I'm, I work all day, every day, man. I work seven days a week, and in between.
between that, you know, whatever free time I do get, you know, I, I spend time with my kids. And then, you know, once my kids are asleep, then I go to my local dive bar and I decompress a little bit because I'm not, I'll go crazy. And uh, always being a gentleman uh, at the bars with the Gentleman Jack. Yes, sir. Yeah, Gentleman Jack on the rocks, splash of water. And uh, you know, usually with a smile on my face. Um, of course, I was going to also ask what your favorite uh, marijuana strain is, but... Um, my favorite, my favorite marijuana strain is, a, is, a, is Jack Daniels. Oh, on the rocks. Uh, on the rocks. Yeah. Special <laughs> one. <laughs> you don't like it? Uh, what is it? Uh, clean? Just straight uh, bowls? Um, going to my next question. You know, there's an etiquette to smoking, whether it's blunts, bowls, and even when you do pack a bowl, who knows if it's a personal or party bowl. So what's the etiquette for you or your experience with smoking? When I smoke, man, it's, you know, it's, it's usually... When I'm in a social environment, I drink more. When I'm smoking, I'm usually in the studio by myself working on beats. So, you know, it's either it's either a bong, a pipe, or a joint, you know what I mean? Uh, when I'm chiefing with, with, the, with the tribe, it's, you know, you roll a few and everything just goes faster. So you adapt to the situation. Exactly. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And for those that don't know, man, it trips me out because me and Everlast just, uh, me, Everlast, and Divine Styler just did an album uh, called War Porn Industries. And, uh, and we gave it away for free. Yeah. And a lot of people still haven't got it. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know how, like, I, I gotta do, like, an instructional video on how to download the album for free. It's like, it's crazy, because you guys download all the fucking albums we sell for free, but the one we get for free, you guys don't know how to download it. That shit trips me out and it blows my mind. But look for that shit, War Porn Industries, produced entirely by Divine Styler, me, Everlast, Divine on it. We got B-Real, Terminology, Vinny Piles. We got uh, Rock Irish Science. We got Big Daddy Kane on that motherfucker. Like, you know, check us out, man. Well, thank you, man. I honestly appreciate your time. Yeah, this man so time, much. Man. And uh, again, Moose, Sick Jackin, live at the Observatory, representing at the house. Peace, Peace. out, Sick Jack, baby.